episode one of Perspectives with Gwen. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as promised, we do have our very first guest to grace our platform. Her name is Prophet Kanye Zoom. She is a lawyer by profession. She was crowned South Africa's youngest legal mining executive at the age of 26. Even got the name Pitbull for some weird reason that she will explain to us. Now she is currently uh, ESCOM's legal, chief legal advisor. Yes, and also we will get to load shedding. So <laughs> <laughs> if you are keen and wondering what's happening with load shedding, stopping, going on and off, Prophet Kanye Zungu is here to give us that and more. Prophet, thank you so much and welcome to Perspectives with Gwen. Thank you so much, Gwen. Thank you so much uh, for having me. Uh, greetings to the viewers uh, at home. It's absolutely a pleasure and an honor to be on Perspectives. Um, with Gwen. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> with Mama Gwen. <laughs> How about that? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Prophet. And I think let's just get right into it. Okay. So I think from the intro, our, our viewers and our uh, listeners, because we're also on the podcasting platforms. Wow. So we are on YouTube awesome. if you're viewing, and also we are on Spotify, Apple Play, and Google Play if you are just listening on audio. So, Prophet, take us through what is currently happening in South Africa and I think around the world um, from a spiritual aspect, a political aspect, and also our economical aspect, because I think that gives a whole rounder of things that impact a person and our current um, system that we're living under. Mm, mm. Thank you so much for that question. It's quite a, a, an important question, uh, especially in this generation when there are a lot of changes around the world mm. and not just in South Africa. So if you are going to answer that question, you need to obviously understand that the spiritual informs the political and mm. informs the economical. Let me make an example. You'll recall that each time in First Kings, um, and first and second Samuel, you'll see that each time the Israelites or the chosen people of God would deviate from God, there mm. would be a famine. Mm. There would be a famine, uh, there'd be political unrest, and the economy would be uh, troubled. So whenever the economy would go down in Israel, it was mm. always an indication that their hearts have moved from God. Um, mm. Jeremiah says, I think it's in chapter 12, he says, uh, it's God speaking through the prophet Jeremiah. He says, how long will the land remain parched and the, and the, and the land dry and dark, um, mm. load shedding? Mm. How long will the land remain parched? Parched is, it has holes, it has um, uh, indentations, mm. pot potholes, potholes. Sure. So, so Jeremiah, wow. they had potholes. Wow. The land was dark. It was load shed, so to speak, wow. at the time. And um, the Lord responds, the people are crying out, God, if you are the true God, why are you allowing this to happen to us? Mm -hmm. And God responds to the prophet Jeremiah and says, guys, how long will this happen? When will your hearts come back to me? So mm -hmm. whenever you see an economy that is declining, you see a parched land, you see, um, you know, that the political sphere is not as stable. It's mm -hmm. usually an indication that the hearts are away from God. I mean, it's been wow. happening in biblical times. It's happening now. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. I, I love how you even touch on, on, on things such as, as potholes because we get frustrated and you, and you drive on a pothole and you're thinking it's just a pothole and you're thinking it's just load shedding. So um, I, I love the fact that you go on a spiritual aspect of it and even when it comes to the, to the political sense, people think that governance is politics. Mm. Can you maybe just expand on that because um, I, I know you have a, a much deeper understanding of what governance actually is. Mm. And also maybe looking at also self-governance. Because I think yeah. when we don't realize that we also have a role to play when it comes to self-governance, people tend to rely on the political aspect of it and thinking it's our government that needs mm. to take care of everything. Mm. You know, so looking at governance, how important is it and, and what's the, the value of governance in, 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 a, in a human being and in, in, in an individual actually? Mm. So governance in, in layman's terms, I would say it's the way you control uh, your life or control certain situations for a positive outcome, so mm. to speak. So if you are saying I am governing the city or I'm governing South Africa, mm. I, am the, I am steering South Africa into a positive outcome. I mm. control situations, I control resources, I control efforts from human capital to resources such as money, 
um, you know, mineral resources and so forth to ensure it all works together for a positive outcome. Mm -hmm. That is governance. Okay, mm -hmm. so, but the political, for example, is who rules, simply put. Mm -hmm. And okay. who rules is very much spiritual more than the governance side. Oh, yeah. You'll recall oh, yeah. in the book of Daniel that uh, Daniel prays, he understands by the books that um, on year, I believe, 70, um, the mm -hmm. Israelites should be set free from Babylon. Yes. Year 70 is fast approaching. They are almost there. It's imminent. But there are no signs that the Israelites will be released from captivity in Babylon. Mm -hmm. So Daniel says, you know what, let me engage in a fast. Let me pray and ask the Lord God what's happening. We've understood by the scriptures, by the prophecies of the historical uh, prophets that year 70 is here. We should now be exiting captivity. Mm -hmm. And you'll recall when the angel comes uh, to Daniel to give him the answer. He says, I had come to give you an answer from God, but for 21 days, the prince of Persia, okay, had mm, withstood me mm. from giving you an answer. Who is the prince of Persia? It's the demonic uh, spirit responsible for the territory of Persia. Mm. Persia is Babylon. So Daniel is in Persia physically, and there's a king in Babylon physically. Oh, there's a spiritual governor mm. in the second heavens mm. that governs how he should rule. Mm. So if you see a wicked ruler, no, it's not really him. It's not that he's wicked at heart. Mm. Maybe he is, but not to such an extent. There is a, a spiritual ruler or spiritual mm. governor at the second heaven that is there, you know, influencing him. That's why the angel, the angel was going to come give a word to Daniel that was going to catapult the Israelites out of captivity. Mm. So that spiritual governor had to make sure that angel does not come. But thank God he released Michael, the captain of the, mm, of the Lord's yes. army, to help this angel and bring the answer to Daniel, which would then lead subsequently to their release from captivity. Wow. Sure. That's a mouthful. It thank is. you so much. And I think maybe let's get into how you landed the name Pitbull. Because mm -hmm. that was your seasonal time when you were South Africa's youngest legal mining executive at 26 years old. Mm -hmm. So if you can just take us through your experience when it comes to that as well, because I think also that also tested your, your governance aspect in, in that atmosphere, in, in that spiritual field or in that area that you were exposed to. You also traveled to, to certain countries, different mm -hmm. countries, mm -hmm. you know, um, if you can just take us through that experience as well. And also, how did we get to Pitbull? Okay. How did we get to corporate Pitbull? <laughs> um, um, most of my answers will relate to the Bible because <laughs> it's the reference for life. Mm. Uh, in the book of Mika, chapter 4, verse 1, uh, the prophet Mika prophesies and says, In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above the hills, and people mm. shall flow unto it. Now, the mountain of the Lord's house, we understand, is the glory and the presence of God. Mm. It shall be enthroned, but it says on top of the hills. What are those hills? It's the seven mountains of influence. Okay, in 1975, God spoke uh, through a vision to a man named Lauren Cunningham to another man no, uh, named Bill Wright. Mm. This man didn't really know each other. When they came together, they realized they both received the, seven vis the, the same vision mm. where God says to each of them in the last days, which we are now in, uh, mm. these are the seven spheres of influence or the mm. seven spheres or seven mountains of influence, of influence. It, it, across every nation in India, South Africa, mm. USA, UK, mm. every society is governed by these seven spheres of influence. Of influence. Yes. Mm. And one of them is uh, government and the economy. Mm. So God specifically said to me, I need you to mount up the mountain of government and the mountain of economy. Mm. And I want you to possess it for me. Because if I have somebody in there, then I'm able to control it. From within. From within. You mm. know, a cancer can't, we can't attach a lump of cancer, put it on your skin mm. and think it will influence it won't. Mm. It needs to be inside of you in order to kill you. All right. In order to kill those cells that give you vitality. So if God wants to destroy certain distortions within a mountain or sphere of influence, he will send people inside mm. the mountain. If I want to, as God, control media, I need to send actresses. We actually have actresses at church. God is mm. saying, I'm raising godly actresses. I'm raising wow. godly soccer players. If I want wow. to penetrate the system, go inside. Then you are mm. able to remove the distortions. So yeah, to cut a long story short, um, I was in the mountain of the economy. I still am. It's one of the mountains the Lord has granted me grace in. 
um, and I was quite young, quite feisty. Mm, mm. Uh, I was a deal closer. I closed the deals. <laughs> yes. I closed the deals. I think what really inspired me, I was usually the youngest. In the company I worked for, I was the youngest. I was the second to youngest. Mm, uh, mm. When another younger intern left, then I was the youngest. Mm. But I was the one with the most power in the mining company. Mm. I was second mm. in command next to the CEO. Mm. Um, you know, I spoke well, I drafted well, I negotiated well. And I, in short, we always signed the deal. I, I would never leave a deal mm. unclosed. And I mean, I was very, I can't say aggressive because I'm going to scare the viewers and the listeners, but I was quite assertive. I, I was quite assertive. Mm. Now you'll understand if you are the youngest uh, a face in the boardroom, you're the only black face in the boardroom mm. and uh, you're the female face mm. in the boardroom. There'll be a lot of intimidation. I, have I can all, only imagine. Yes, you have all of these factors working against you, so to speak. So mm. to speak. So you, people will automatically think, oh, okay, no, nothing to worry about. We're negotiating against this young girl, black girl, it's okay. Mm. So I, I, at some point I feel, no, no, I must prove myself. And then, oh, yes. yes. Okay. And so then I would really become a pit bull to mm. a point where many people were really terrified of me, which worked in, in, in our <laughs> favor, the in the company's favor, because, because yeah, yeah. You sealed the deal. You were the man for the job. I was the man for the job. Um, mm. There's a funny instance where we went to London I walked in with my boss, Obama um, Mumal, I still love and respect him today. Mm -hmm. He was the CEO of this company I speak of and also the part shareholder. Mm -hmm. And we walked in and they thought I was his PA. Someone mm -hmm. thought, oh, okay, Shem, this is the PA. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's a boardroom full of white old men. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, okay, Shem, this is the PA. This is uh, the man who's going to give the presentation, referring to him, the CEO. And it's like, no, no, this is, this is the closer. I saw one man just close his book and just sigh. As though he's just like, really, you came all the way from South Africa wow. <laughs> with a young black girl and you're saying she's the man for the job. Mm. Um, but suffice to say, we came back with a deal. Mm. So mm. Uh, uh, it, God mm. really granted me grace. So I was mm. really assertive, really strong oh. um, in the boardroom. And mm. so people called me Pitbull. They would just, <laughs> my former boss would um, uh, uh, send an email or a text to the other the other guys that we are going to be negotiating with, yes. and it send a picture of a dog and it say this one is coming for you. <laughs> Referring to me, it was ridiculous, but yeah, that's in short how I got you, that name. You, you had your times as a pit bull. Um, I did. Do, do you think you you let go of? <laughs> that aspect or <laughs> um i i i think so yes and no um i, I had to go to the lord by the way because mm. if i can be honest there was an element of pride to it oh um that yeah i know i'm gonna get the job done and the lord had said oh. i've granted you grace not because you are a great speaker or you are very mm. intelligent i've granted you the grace in fact at some point i used to stir my bit um it believe it or not and the lord said i've granted you grace um so you can represent me it's not oh, about you so it's i about you oh, exactly so i had sure. to say lord let me let go a bit of now mm. this name i don't mm. and he said no no i still need you to be bold i need to be to be strong the bible says mm. it is not given us a spirit of fear, of fear. but that of power yes. love and of a sound mm. mind mm. so you do need soundness of mind you do mm. need boldness and power but mm. love in between because sure. it's a spirit of Power, mm. love, and sound, and sound mind. mind. But each soundness of mind and power or boldness, it must be put together by love. Mm. Hence, mm. it doesn't give you a spirit of power and sound mind. Power, love, and of a sound, sound mind. mind. Okay. Yeah. So the love can determine the intention. That's correct. Oh. The love can in, mm. it determine the intention. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay. And you speak of the seven mountains of influence. So as I mentioned before, you are the lead pastor and founder of Kang, which is... Mm known as Kingdom Ambassadors Network. International. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I think also maybe it was, it was prophetic then to say that, no, you're traveling internationally because this is going to be you for oh a long God. term. So mm. you were traveling that time thinking you're just doing it because you're part of this company, mm. but international is your territory. That's correct. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so I, I love how you touch on the seven mountains of, or, or, seven mountains of, of influence and also, I, I want to get into Kingdom Ambassadors because I feel like it, it's, it's really a, a learning hub. It's mm. an apostolic hub. Mm. So that's where you really exert great teachings mm. about spirituality, but also expressing your spirituality in that sphere that you've been placed in by mm. God. Yeah. So um, if you can take us through Kingdom Ambassadors as, as a learning hub and as an apostolic hub, 
um, mm-hmm. what God has laid in your heart for mm-hmm. this generation as well, and where do you see Kani going? Sure. Okay. Um, Jesus as the model prayer in Matthew 16, one of the things, you know, the model prayer where he says, yes. this is how you should pray. One of the mm-hmm. utterances he makes is, let your kingdom come in earth, not on, but in, in earth. earth. Original, mm-hmm. original text is not on earth, but in mm-hmm. earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let your kingdom come. Let it be enthroned in earth, in, in earth. the systems of the earth. When oh, Jesus says, wow. go into the world, the world there uh, is, is, is cosmos, which means systems, not geographical world. So I know we think mm-hmm. go and preach. Yeah. That's partly it, but he was saying go into the cosmos. The world mm-hmm. is cosmos, which means the systems. So my, uh, education is a system. The economy mm-hmm. is a system. Government is a system. Uh, yes. So when God, when Jesus now says the model prayer is let your kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven, he's mm. saying the model of excellence where you are sovereign God in heaven, let it be so here in earth, in every system, in earth, in governments, mm. let God be sovereign, mm. in the economy, let God be sovereign, in mm. media, let him be sovereign, in family, religion, politics, each and every sphere of influence, mm. let God be sovereign. And how does God do it? He penetrates using functionaries who come inside the system and they work their way up so that God, and they ensure and they insist God is sovereign and enthroned in that sphere of influence. Mm. So that's what Kingdom Ambassadors Network International (laughs) is about. Um, It's about training believers Mm. uh, to carry and advance the torch of the gospel of Jesus Christ in their sphere of influence. influence. It doesn't help that we all want to carry his torch behind the pulpit Mm. because Mm. where are the souls that we must win for God? Many of them are in the marketplace, you know. Yes. They are at your yes. workplace, they are yes. in business, they are in governments, they are in different, they are in schools, you know. Mm. So how does it help that God calls all of us to be preachers? Mm. So, mm. <laughs> so mm. the, the apostolic hub, camping and apostolic hub, is really a hub that trains and equips believers to go out there into the world and insist that the kingdom of God is enthroned in their particular sphere of influence. Mm. Mm. So, so no territory on earth should be left vacant no it can't i've heard disturbing um um utterances even from ministers and i used to say this as well to be quite honest ministers of the gospel to say let's leave politics to the politicians oh yes we must stick. oh yes what do you mean what do you mean <laughs> god insists we are in politics mm. not in debates now yes. god doesn't want us to be petty yes. uh, let us debate mm. no no he just wants a man one who go into that mountain, pray, and to enforce God's righteousness mm. and excellence in governing a certain territory. Well, it's quite interesting that you mentioned that people, when you when you say, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, people automatically box you inside the church, church mm. as you know it. Mm. So then you can't say anything about politics, you can't say anything about the economy, because it's like, eh, eh, stick to your lane. But what does church mean? In Matthew 16, verse 18, mm. the first time church Jesus mentions the word church, it. He says, and on this revelation, he asks, who do you guys think I am? Simon Peter says, uh, you are the Christ, which means the anointed one, which is the office, mm. and the son of the living God, which is the person of Jesus. Mm. Whenever the Bible says Jesus Christ, and when it says Christ Jesus, different things. Mm. Christ mm. Jesus is the office. It's his administrative office as the head of his government. Mm. Jesus Christ is the man who saved us and our Lord and Savior. So he says, sure. based on that revelation, Peter, of who I am, I will build my church and the gates of hell or the gates of her days cannot prevail. The mm. word church there is ecclesia, which means a council, a parliament seating where mm. big decisions are made. That's what church is. It's not a place where you go, jump up and down in tongues, roll around, then go out and live defeated lives. Mm. That's not what Jesus mm. had in mind. He mm. said the ecclesia, the word ecclesia at that time in the Roman Empire, they also stole the word from the Greek. It means parliament, they are council. So when, when the Romans would say we are going to parliament as the, as the uh, political people, as the members of parliament, mm. they'd say we're going to the ecclesia. Jesus then no. says, I, am, I will build my ecclesia, which means my, my council, pal- my, my parliament. parliament. Meaning there's be functionaries in parliament. Prophet, thank you so much for your time. And we do hope that you will be back on our platform because you've got so much to share. I feel like today was just an introduction, really. Sure. Uh, there's, there's so much wisdom in you. And... I, I am fortunate and blessed to have had this time with you today, sure. and um, your parting words, please. Oh 
my, thank you so much um, to the Perspectives with Gwen family. <laughs> um, it's been an absolute pleasure to have this discussion with you. Mm. And let God's kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. Let's continue advancing it, Gwen. You know, let the Lord anoint you and ordain you for greater exploits. Amen. Greater exploits. So uh, let his kingdom come through this podcast um, and through this platform. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.